how's it going? I'm Zero. I'm DK. And I'm Rizzo. And today in Anime Reaction, we watch the fourth episode of Little Witch Academia. If you want to check out our reaction to the fourth episode of Little Witch Academia, hit that link in the description below. And be sure to give us feedback in the comment section because we love hearing from you. And as always, if you like what you see, subscribe to Otaku Saga. And don't forget to like and share our videos. And, and thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. So, Little uh, Witch Academia, episode four. Um, Latte is a big fan girl. The end. Yeah, this is pretty much this episode is like a piss take on all the uh, like really popular teen, well, yeah, teen tweeny supernatural romance novels. Yeah, a lot of yeah, basically like in American particular young... the 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 one that they're making fun of is Twilight, but. You can expand it out to sort of, to almost a piss take on otaku on the otaku subculture as a whole. It's just through the eyes of a particular fandom. Yeah, I, I guess. But uh, yeah, so the beginning of this episode, we see uh, Latte talking to somebody via the crystal ball <laughs> um, with texts. Weird. I can't. I can't find of a uh, one or two syllable catchy name that just sounds magical for the messaging service they use. So yeah, it's sort of virtual Al. Yeah. Um, but basically, she's setting up with this person. To, well, she's confirming with this person that they're both going to this event in the city, um, which we later learn is a release event. For the 365th novel in this series that's been going on for 120 years. Holy fuck. And nobody thought that this was strange? Well, if you think about it, the, the author releases three novels a year for 120 years. Mm. Yikes. I thought our workload was bad. She makes Stephen King look like an amateur by comparison. And I thought a lot of light novel writers put out a lot, which a lot of right, not light novel writers put out two novels per year. Damn. Which but, I, I consider to be pretty significant. Yeah, but we know for damn sure that this isn't a light novel, uh, mainly because it has a simple title, Nightfall. <laughs> What you did there! I fucking see it! Really? I, I couldn't tell with the way that they, um... The way the word mark looked. Yeah, the way the word mark looked. I, I half expect, uh... <laughs> I half expect uh, lawyers of a certain American author to be knocking on the doors of Trigger soon. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I have no idea what you're talking about. But uh, anyway... This as, sounds awesome. As we learn, the trio gets in trouble because... Atsuko, uh, Akko. Akko, dumbass. Well, I mean, her name is Atsuko, but Atsuko. I just read it off the character list. Akko is a fucking dumbass and stole a tart because well, she was hungry. Well, they, they thought it was a pie. Yeah, she stole a pie, and then Akko corrected them and let them know that it was a tart, which gets them in, into even deeper shit mm -hmm. because tarts are more expensive than pies. As uh, and apparently, Professor and, Badcock so descriptively put it. Yeah. And then she also brings up a point that was brought up in the first episode, which is the university doesn't have very much funding. Um, which is why this is such a big deal, because they got to pinch pennies wherever they can. For instance, the fact that they only buy potatoes for their students. Geez, are they trying to make their students into Mark Watneys or something? <laughs> I mean, potatoes are one thing, but they don't provide all your nutrients. No, that's that's true. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so they get into deep shit, and they're told that there's a delivery coming, and they have to help unload it. Which of course, for the next it's all, day. It's all potatoes. 
And of course, it's on the big day Latte's been looking forward to. Mm-hmm. So. And then La- Latte, I think, makes a pretty reasonable request. Hey, I'll do anything else you want. All right. Anything else. And of course, the headmistress says, nope. Yet. Not only nope, but now since I know that you were planning on heading to the city, you now, you, you three are now expressly forbidden to go to the city tomorrow. So not only, not only did they get in trouble, like not only did they, uh, did Akko get them in, in the even deeper ship because of what she stole, but then Latte puts her foot in her mouth by telling the teachers that she was planning on going to the city the next day. And, and so the teachers are like, oh, really? Then oh, we might as well add this onto your, onto your uh, punishment. And Susie's like, why do I team up with these idiots? Yep. Uh, then Actually, we... I'm pretty sure uh, Latte was like, why do I team up with these idiots? Because Latte is the one that's in... Yeah, no, Su- Susie is, is in a permanent state of why did I team up with these idiots? That is her permanent state of being. Uh, but then we get a little scene where Latte explains what was going on. Oh my god. And and the way Latte just, just goes off on this fangirl tangent. I joked about it before, but that really is the crew of this episode. And at times, especially like this, it's adorable. It really is. To, to some extent. If it wasn't for the fact that I know people who were exactly like her. Me too. Hmm. Well, it's, it's actually nice to see a uh, more, little more personality come out of her because we haven't really seen it in the first episodes of the series. Yeah. So this being our focus episode, good then time uh, to bring it out. Who was it? Susie, I believe, comes up with the idea, or was it Akko? I think it was Akko. It, it was definitely Akko because we were definitely uh, poking fun at how horrible it was going to end up. Oh right. So yeah, they come up with an idea, and their idea is to help unload like they're supposed to. And then jump in the back of the truck when it leaves. Which works to perfection, actually. Yeah. Which I gotta, I gotta say, though, you, you think there'd be one more person kind of watching the back, making sure the students are unloading, right? Because it was just the three of them and the lady driving the van. Then they get to the gate, and you had the Cyclops of the troll patrolling. He didn't even bother to open the back door. Well, trolls are not exactly known for their intelligence. That's true. Um, and now I kind of want to make a uh, troll in a D and D campaign that is super high intelligence for like, the party to get past. Like, yeah, like a like a <laughs> scientist or something, or the Grand Vizier to a local ruler, something like that. That'd oh, that, be, oh, that'd that, be that is evil. That'd be a hilarious D and D campaign. Anyway, Write that module and publish it. <laughs> yeah. So they end up going to the event, and um, I. Th- I think I think we can skip over most of what happened during the event. Most, most of the events are non consequential, but I do, I do I wish that Nightfall was a real book now, considering how fucking awesome it sounds. You have pirate waiters, you have Vikings, werewolves, and vampires who go to space, and you have dancing Big Ben. How awesome is that? All in the same universe. Except for the fact that it's basically based off of Twilight. It's still a better love story than Twilight. Dancing Big Ben is a better love story than Twilight. <laughs> yeah, but it's based off of Twilight, so I'm sure that that just that that being based off of Twilight finds some way to ruin all that. Let's be honest. Now. Um, that would be a major. But effort. yeah, most of the events are inconsequential. The right. the the bit that is though. Um, is that they go into the event hall and there's a there's a quiz contest. Well, there is something that I do want to note, and that's just meeting the great Big Ben eight ten. Oh yeah, uh, her, uh, her pen pal on uh, magic tw- on magic Twitter or magic Skype. The the, the dancing Big Ben. I mean, they, well, there you go. They yeah. go ahead and hit it off, but. At the very beginning of the event, they actually meet up and. Well, yeah, they, they meet up and they don't they makes, don't actually know it. Remember this makes, for later, kids. Yes, remember this for later. Anyway, so the yeah the quiz show goes through, 
and it kind of skips over most of it. They get to the final question, question 100, of this ridiculously hard quiz, by the way. Softball question, yeah. But Softball question was, what's the address? Address of the manufacturer of the gloves that the main character wears. Yeah. Anyway, so you get to the final question, and it's Latte versus Big Ben 810. And uh, the guy starts asking a question. Once Big Ben thinks that she knows what the que- the answer to the question is, she goes ahead and rings before which, the guy which, finishes. Yeah, which happens Classic really quickly. Thunder. Yeah, and she lists off what she thinks is the answer, and then the guy finishes the question, which is not what he was asking. Not, not what she... It, it, the question is not what, she, what Big Ben 810 thought that he was asking. Yeah, she buzzed in before the question was finished being asked. Yeah. That's and a game show blunder. Then uh, the real question was something about flowers. And so a lot standing there trying to figure it out. She's like, it's not roses. It's not... Uh, uh, I forgot the other one. There's yeah. Not- something or other and, yeah and then she looks up at the author by the way the author's sitting there golf a uh, little golf lolly type character who looks way too young to, to be writing a 120 year long novel series but, again remember that for later kids yeah uh, then she looks up and she sees that the author's playing on her phone mm-hmm. sees that the phone case has hydrangeas hydrangeas it ranges on the on the phone case, so she answers that, and it's correct. She wins this nice old fountain pen. Very nice pen. The author comes down and gives it to her personally and says, This novel series was not written by one author. In fact, I am the ninth. Or twelfth. Or twelfth? Oh, twelfth. And uh, the new author is whoever the old author gives this pen to. You are now the 13th. And then she disappears. Like, poof. Off the stage. In front of everybody. In front of everybody. Um, Which I really like that as a story device. As a story device, it's alright. I think it could have been done a little bit better on maybe not in a, the author's part. Maybe not in an anime like this, but maybe in a serious story, perhaps. Yeah. But, but Lat- Latte doesn't like this. She doesn't like the idea of this. She's not the kind of person who wants to be her idol. She's not Akko. Well, yeah, ideas. like like Akko is the type kind of person who wants to be Shiny Chariot, mm. whereas uh, Latte admires um, Annabelle, the writer, but she doesn't want to be Annabelle. She doesn't want to write the story. And she just wants to enjoy more of Annabelle's writing. Yeah. And so she pretty much on her own starts looking for, let's be honest, the other two are useless. Yeah, she goes into there like a force of nature. Akko and Susie are just swept up Yeah, she goes to look for Annabelle. Akko tries to help, but she's kind of stupid. She does more pole dancing instead. Rather suits her, but... Wow. And Susie, (laughs) of course, looks for poisonous mushrooms. Rather suits her. Rather suits her. Um, one's tripping, one's tripping. But they both, they all meet up again uh, after after a time, and Susie reminds Latte that uh, old items might have fairies, that and that Latte ones. has an ability to talk to said fairies. That she learned from her witch grandmother. Yep. How did Susie know this uh, and remember it, and Latte didn't? Yeah, it's one of those story devices where it's like, oh, we need a way for this to be conveyed to the audience. Mm. Ignorance for the audience's sake? Pretty much. We need a way for this to be said out loud for the audience's sake. Because if a character is just, if a character is like, oh, hey, I have the ability to talk to fairies, they're not going to say that out loud. They could have, though, and that would I think it would have worked better, especially in an anime like this where you could have a nice anime fall moment. Well, I'm like, I could see maybe, like, Susie reminding Latte that um, that old items have may have fairies in them. Oh. And then Latte going, oh, yeah, I have, you know, I can totally talk to him or yeah, whatever. That could have been but a better way to handle it. I don't know. It, yeah. did, it did feel a little awkward. 
I think that's the way that the conversation was played played out. But yeah, it just felt odd. Um, but yeah, so they they uh, relocate to a forested area, park park, park, park area, and uh, big. I assume <coughs> because it's quiet and close to nature for the fairies. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that Latte calls upon said fairy who looks like the uh, smoking caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland. Kind of does, yeah. That's, that's Complete with pipe. It's okay. It, I was thinking more Gandalf because of the way the pipe was shaped, but that's a good one. Yeah. Well, no, that, that's what I thought of, too, to be completely honest. Bright ass green smoking a pipe. There you go. Or smoking a That works. Hookah. That works. Um, but, uh. <laughs> the, the, fairy, the fairy says, yeah, I, I have no idea. Well, it's a. Wah, 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 wah. He's like a male version of the teacher from Charlie Brown. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, you do have to make it something that Akko and Susie aren't going to be able to understand. Right. So it's either you actually make it a language or you just make it unintelligible. So it's a lot easier just to make it unintelligible rather than come up with sounds that sound like a language. Um, but basically the fairy says, I don't know. Hell if I know, she disappeared. <laughs> Where's your looking, lady? <laughs> right. But, but, the caterpillar, the, 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 the true caterpillar. The, caterpillar. Fairy. <laughs> <laughs> the fairy, the it's fairy true. actually said that. Is it good? The fairy actually told Latte that uh, he's the one who chooses uh, the successor of the pen, oh. not, not the actual author, and that the current. Or the uh, the previous owner was the true-ish owner. Yeah, yeah, this is the chosen one. Yeah. I just want to say, in true caterpillar fashion, he gives Latte a non-answer. First. Ah. Um. But so they're thinking about how to find her, and then they they think, you know, oh well, she likes likes uh, hydrangeas. Yeah, wouldn't you know? Uh, and then Susie just ruin. like turns her head and goes, "Hey, look! There's a bunch of hydrangeas there." Really? <laughs> Convenient. Convenient. And I know we have to know, move the story along, but goddamn. <laughs> what do you know? The author's right there. Uh, and then oh. her and Latte have basically a little heart to heart. After you know, after, after a really convinced. awesome like three way Scooby stack. Yeah. And then she convinces her to keep writing the story. Fangirling, violin music, all's well that ends well. Annabelle keeps writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unleashes a really cool looking like spell. I don't know if it's a like a. I don't know. Like if a that was a writing spell, spells. I could totally see how two novels a year, two to three novels a year get put out. I wish I had that ability. Just think of something and just whoosh, something yeah. green light and boom, bestseller. I get so many more things done. Right. Anyway, so they return to school, and of course we get. Oh, I did. I did, did forget. Uh, Hannah and Barbara, um, the bitches, snitches. Yeah, Di- Diana's two friends, the groupies, the the terrible, terrible human beings. Um, they were at the event properly, um, though. I believe be. Barbara was there on it. Or was it Barbara on it? A- no. Yeah. Hannah was there on accident. Barbara was uh, there. totally there on accident. Not yeah. a fan at all. Yeah. 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 Um, and it looked like they snitched on the main trio to the uh, principal. But, and but the background event, though. You see the. The great Ben, you know, costume. I think, you know, going off the username on the Magic Skype. Well, uh, Akko mentioned that she saw the person in the big Ben costume. Uh, sorry, the great Ben costume. Totally not big Ben. Um, go through the uh, go through the ley line before them. 
Yeah. And then you get a scene where uh, you get Ursula and the kind of to the side. You get Hannah and Barbara to the side. Then you get the uh, headmistress yelling at them. And then in the very background, you see wearing the big, the Great Ben uh, cosplay on her back, back is Professor Badcock. Um, yeah. Professor Badcock. One of the, one of the bitchy teachers. The one who pointed out how much a tart is four times as much as a pie, and that these these three girls are horrible for trying to steal one because the university needs all the money that they can frickin' get and rent it on for way too long. And had a full-on argument with Akko about it. By the way, I want to point out, if they're really that hard up, they shouldn't be buying tarts. Period. Right, especially when they uh, the main sustenance comes from potatoes and only potatoes. Well, you can probably imagine that they bought the tart not for the students. Mm. Which is kind of a dick move. But, yeah. Anyway. That was the end of the episode. Well, all right. Get well, it? it was funny. It, oh, well, yeah. Okay, funny. so there was, a, there was another little bit where it shows their second punishment, which is to clean out the troll's trough or some something. Something like that. Why the hell are they feeding tro- uh, trolls if they're that hard up to feed the students? Well, they're the security, obviously. Remember? Ah, oh, true. Security's not taking, taking that good care of. Well, it's slop. Maybe they're, they're fattening they're him fed. up. Maybe they're fattening <laughs> him up to serve at a big feast or something. Maybe they taste like pork or chicken. Hmm. Roasting trolls, not just for online comment sections anymore. We also end off the episode with a lot. They are, they're all going to bed at the end of the day, and Latte uh, says good night or whatever to the great Ben, whatever. Um, and then goes ahead and says, go, goes to uh, start start to maybe read the think new about novel. think about reading the new novel, which I've been he- I've been in that situation before where mm. I, I'm in bed, I'm like, okay, I, I'm not sure if I could I could sleep right now. Do I really want to? Maybe I should just read a couple of pages, read a couple. and then you spiral into death. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, um, in, in, instead of doing that, Latte chose probably the correct way, and just uh, no, no. I'll save it for later. Good night, book. The PBA. Yep. And that's the end of the episode. That's the end. So, yeah. There is totally a professor called Badcock. <laughs> you know, when you get to that age, things just stop working right. She's a woman. Did you just assume her gender? <laughs> It'll not bomb shell. Uh, let us know what you thought of the anime, what you thought of our reaction in the comment section below. Yep, thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Anime Reaction. I'm going to go off and laugh over the name Professor Badcock. I'm Zero. <laughs> Badcock. He said Professor. See you next time. <laughs>